Today's online service does not offer a communion meditation opportunity. If you would desire to have communion, please contact the office and we will make sure someone brings communion to you very soon. God bless you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to worship. This is a celebration of the second Sunday after Pentecost. Um, you know what's unique is I looked at the calendar for this next upcoming week. Uh, June 3rd um, through the whatever it is um, there's not much on the calendar it's like whoa wh wow uh, a break a Sabbath for for some here um, just a couple things that I do want to share with you though that are happening in uh, June that are very important first off uh, it, we will be issuing a call a congregational meeting a special congregational meeting to issue a call to pastor Liss this is going to be happening near the end of June, um, and we will uh, make sure that you are aware of when that will take place. Um, we're investigating, um, putting a link on the computer on our homepage so that you can join us for that meeting. Um, I'm not quite sure that the votes are going to count yet, but we will discover that soon enough. Uh, and then um, another thing is that uh, we don't have um, Market on the Move. Um, we do have Bible study though this week. Uh, we're going to finish the first book of Corinthians, chapter 16. That will be on Thursday at 10 a.m. And that will be our last uh, meeting for this um, spring into the summer. We're going to take a few months off in the summer. Uh, but then also at the end of June as well, we do have our Vacation Bible School. Uh, that will be taking place in the last week of June. Uh, we encourage you to invite kids of all ages uh, to be a part of that. And again, that's the last week in June. So um, you have your work cut out for you. Uh, invite people to Vacation Bible School. Pretty easy to do. And so with that, um, let's just take a moment now. Enjoy this moment of Sabbath that comes to you, to hearing God's Word. Uh, just relaxing and sitting back and, and taking in and basking in the power and activity of God in your life and in the lives of your loved ones and have God's operating all around you all the time. We just pray that we have the eyes of faith to see his grace and glory around us each and every day. So with that, uh, we now move into worship. God bless your week. We continue our lives in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In Psalm 82, we hear, God has taken his place in the divine council. In the midst of the gods, he holds judgment. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Give justice to the weak and the orphan. Maintain the right of the lowly and the destitute. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. For all who have put their trust in you, O Lord, we know our state of sin, and we can turn nowhere or to no one to make us right other than to you, the Lord of mercy and grace. We consider our failings and our joys as we continue to walk in the faith you have given. Let us observe a moment of silence for reflection and self-examination. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to us the entire forgiveness of all of our sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>
Let us now join together in praying the prayer for this second Sunday after Pentecost. We pray, Lord God of all nations, you have revealed your will to your people and promised your help to us all. Help us to hear and to do what you command, that the darkness may be overcome by the power of your light. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first lesson for this second Sunday after Pentecost comes to us from the Old Testament book of Deuteronomy. It is the fifth chapter, verses 12 through 15. Some of you go, hey, wait, that sounds familiar. Yes, that is uh, the chapter in which we do receive the Ten Commandments, the second uh, um, reiteration of the Ten Commandments. Um, and what we have here is the, the commandment in which uh, we are commanded to observe the Sabbath and keep it holy. Um, and, and you can see that this uh, happens to be 12, verse 12, 13, 14, 15. There's four um, verses. Uh, this is the longest or uh, uh, explanation or command that comes to us in the Ten Commandments, which would indicate that it's pretty important uh, to spend time, intentional time, basking in, in, in what God has done and what God is doing and what God will do, um, to, to spend intentional time with the Lord and, and meditate and consider and just, just live in, in this incredible relationship that God has forged uh, for us to observe some time in our lives to reflect upon God in our lives and how God is calling us, how God has equipped us, how God can use us to benefit his kingdom and further his kingdom in this world. And so here again um, is the command to observe the Sabbath and keep it holy. Observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your male or female slave or your ox or your donkey or any of your livestock or the resident alien in your towns so that your male and female slave may rest as well as you. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. This ends our first lesson. Our second, uh, our gospel lesson for the sake comes to us from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. It's the second chapter and we will be reading verses 23, chapter, chapter 2, verses 23, all the way through chapter 3, verse 6. Um, and what we have here is uh, an accounting of the activity of Jesus and his disciples on the Sabbath. Um, they're, they're probably out in the country somewhere. They're heading in town to go to the uh, temple, to the synagogue, to worship. And uh, on their way, um, some of the disciples are hungry um, and they, they uh, pluck some, some grain and they eat it. Um, not kosher, not good at all. And so Jesus has some answers to their questions that reveal to us the true nature and the true person and the true Godhead of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so with that, we hear this lesson. One Sabbath, he was going through the grain fields. As they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God when Abiathar was the high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which it is not lawful for any but the priest to eat. And he gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, the Sabbath was made for humankind and not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. And again, he entered the synagogue 
And a man was there who had a withered hand. They watched him to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, Come forward. Then he said to them, Is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. He looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart and said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against him how to destroy him. This is the gospel of our Lord. It is time for the children's message. So hopefully there's some children around. If not, I'm sure these words will encourage us in faith and, and love and grace. Will you rest with me? Just please rest with me. <sighs> Wasn't that nice? To be able to just sit and rest. The Lord wants this to be a part of our, our routine, our life. To, to find time of rest. Not necessarily sleep, but, but God wants us to rest so much that he gives us a day of rest, an entire day of rest where we are to spend time, intentional time with God and, and just to enjoy all that God has given, all that God has, has blessed us with, all the, the times God has answered our prayers, all the just spend time in creation. God gave us this beautiful creation just to go and enjoy the creation and see God in the creation. These are just ways and means of resting. Not to do our routine work all the time. Jesus even does this. You know that? Jesus, as we read, goes off by himself to spend time in that eternal relationship of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He doesn't take the disciples with him. He just goes off alone. And sometimes it is good to be alone. In our world today where we have phones and we can access people all the time and we're afraid of we're, we're left alone all by ourselves, well, that can be good as well. As a matter of fact, the Lord does want us to spend time just by ourselves, to reflect upon being a child of God and how special that is and how loved we are. So I encourage you, take time to Sabbath. We have a day of Sabbath, but I think each and every day we should Sabbath a little bit to spend time by ourselves, and spend time in what God is, has done and what God is doing in our lives and in the people's lives around us and in the world around us. So take a break, take a Sabbath, relax and spend some time with God. So with that, I hope and pray that your summer has begun on a good note and hopefully you're getting in some water to cool off as we are reaching those 100 degree days. Make sure you stay hydrated and God bless your week. We'll see you later, bye now. Will you please join with me in a word of prayer? Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for this day, this time to rest, to hear your word, to consider your activity in the world and in our lives. This opportunity, this day to Sabbath, spend time, intentional time with you and intentional time with the, all that you have created around us, including family and friends. We ask Almighty Lord that as we meditate now on your word, may the meditations on each heart that hears these words be pleasing and acceptable in your gracious sight, we do pray, amen. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus, who is the risen Christ of God, amen. 
In our lesson today, uh, well, actually in, the, in chapter two of Mark, um, Jesus is clarifying as to what it means to be right, to, to, to why we practice these, these spiritual disciplines that have been given to us so that we may be right with God and, 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 and how to be right with God. Um, so he's speaking about uh, the disciplines of fasting, of, of prayer, and of giving alms. He's going a little bit into the depths of, of, of why we practice or live out these disciplines of prayer and fasting and giving, sharing of what we have been given. Jesus speaks to the matter of righteousness is not something of our own doing. Um, that's one of the messages that uh, Jesus wants to be very clear about uh, as far as being a child of God and, and, and being uh, active in God's kingdom and reign uh, to be a part of God's activity here on earth. It requires this sense of being right with God and right with God only happens through that which comes from God, including the Savior. And so, yeah, um, the thinking uh, among God's people back then in the day that if you were right with God, God would bestow blessings and honor and, and property and, and gifts and kids and lots of fruits and lots of animals, all those things. If you're right with God, those things are going to happen. People can look around and say, hey, that, that, that person's right with God. Look at all they have. Look how God's blessed them. And so that mindset is something that Jesus has to address. If you're not right with the Lord back then, well, you were poor. You had disease. You had no kids. You were barren. You had to work all the time. There's no time for Sabbathing because you're just a rotten person and you're getting what you deserve. Jesus again wants to address that, set that straight because that's hardly what God's kingdom looks like. It's far from what God desires for God's people in this world. And so Jesus here speaks to some of the rules and regulations that are on the Sabbath. And again, the Sabbath is a day of rest. We are to honor that. And, and, and so as generations evolved uh, within God's people, within Judaism, there is this understanding that um, we have been given the law. And as we follow this law, um, things will go well. particularly on the Sabbath, because as we saw, the Sabbath keeping was, is, is, is the longest section um, in the Ten Commandments. It's very important to Sabbath. And Jesus here is walking with his disciples on the Sabbath. I imagine they're heading into town somewhere to, to a synagogue to, to give thanks and praise and worship. Um, and they pluck grain, which is considered work. And these things come to the attention of Jesus. Because the Sabbath has some very, very specific laws in regard to what you can do on the Sabbath and what you can't do on the Sabbath. And that still holds true today. Uh, there are um, groups within uh, 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 Judaism that um, at that time had 39 categories of, of work uh, and then within each of those categories there were laws in regarding to each of them. For example, um, let's say you were carrying something. Well, there's some things you can carry, some things you can't. And there's rules under each of the, that, that, that arena, that work of carrying. It's the same with, with washing. There's things you can wash, there are things you can, grinding, kneading, combing, um, uh, chain stitching, uh, <laughs> trapping, shearing, slaughtering, tanning. Uh, there's, there's these categories of work 
So we have laws and laws and laws in regard to each of those categories as to what you can and cannot do. In our lesson today, the disciples uh, bring shame upon Jesus. They bring shame and embarrassment upon Jesus by not following the rules, in particular regarding reaping and harvesting. There's things you can do and things you can't do on the Sabbath. They were doing things you can't do. So as a rabbi, as a leader of uh, God's people, that who Jesus certainly is, uh, their actions actually are bringing shame and embarrassment upon Jesus. And I, it, it doesn't seem as if Jesus is shamed or embarrassed. And so the Pharisees want to make sure that he experiences this shame and this embarrassment of his shoddy crew of disciples. They want to make sure they're in their place. So they address Jesus. Jesus here again points not to the law, but he points to the righteousness of relationship with God. The, the righteousness to do what is necessary for this righteousness to take hold, to take shape. It's, it, 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 it's hard, to be honest with you, to hear and listen and, and act if you're starving. I mean, there's been studies in the schools. That, that's why so many uh, lunch programs are providing food for our kids. Because if you can't, if you're hungry, you're not going to learn. You're not going to be well. You're not going to be right. So Jesus is sort of scratching his head. And he's speaking about righteousness. Jesus points to the, again, righteousness of relationship that comes from God Almighty and not from following the law. For example, um, let's say there's a guy named Ray and he dies of starvation on the Sabbath despite having all kinds of food around him. Wouldn't that be crazy? Ray dies of starvation while there's food within steps of him. Oh, man. Well, he can't prepare the food. He can't pluck the food. There's a lot of things that he couldn't do. So he just does not eat, and he dies. And at the funeral, I would arrive as, as Ray's uh, spiritual leader and rabbi and priest and I would say oh my goodness do you see the devotion that Ray lived in his life he was willing to give his life up rather than break the law he, he, he could have broke the law and eaten and lived Ray, Ray is such an incredible disciple of God that, that he would not break the law. That's a real, real child of God. And Jesus is sort of saying, hmm, I don't think so. The most precious gift that the Lord has given is not the law but your very life. And if you're going to dismiss your life, if you're going to give up your life rather than, than break the law, you're disrespecting the reverence of life. You're disrespecting what God has given to you. You are disrespecting the Lord of all by neglecting your life in your own well-being. That's not the Sabbath is for. To live our lives, Jesus is saying, not for the law, but to live our life for God, for the very one who has given us life. He was willing to, Ray was willing to sacrifice his life for the law. But not for neighbor 
or for God. That's why we have life, to serve the Lord, to praise the Lord, to reflect the honor and reverence and holiness with our very lives of God. We don't give up on our life for the law. We don't worship the law. We worship the Lord who's given us life. And I'm not saying the law is bad. And I'm not saying that the law is not good. The law is a gift. And it is good. The man with the withered hand is asked to come forward. And I find this very interesting. Jesus is, is showing them what this means. That, that, that we were not made for the law, the law was made for us. We were, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the, for the Sabbath. And here's Jesus entering into a synagogue. And there's a man whose life is hindered. A man whose life to work with his hands is impossible. He wants to restore this man to right relationship. And so my question here in this instance, I mean, Jesus is aware of the man, calls him forward. And he asks this question, is it right to give life or kill? Is it right to restore? What, I mean, isn't that what the Sabbath is about? To be about living in life? To enjoy life? To enjoy that which God has given? To, to live in this joyous day, time with God and all that God has done? And it just stirs joy and glory within us. And so here's this man with the withered hand who's not really experiencing this because of his deformity. It's not because he's a sinner, but because it's tough, <laughs> particularly in those days. And so the, the, the Pharisees watch to see what Jesus is gonna do. They want him to heal him so that they could raise charges against Jesus for doing work on the Sabbath. So Jesus calls him forward. And here's the interesting thing for me. <laughs> what does Jesus do? Jesus commands. Jesus speaks a word. That's all Jesus does. He speaks a word. No show. No waving, no fog machines, no dancing, no playing music, no nothing. He doesn't do anything but stand there and speaks a word. That's all he does. Speaks a word, and this is the word that has been spoken from the very beginning of creation. The word that comes forth that says, let there be light. The word that comes forth and says, let's create them in our image, male and female in our image. And life comes with the very breath of God, that word of God, that word of God that has the power to defeat enemies. It's by a word that the entire army of the Egyptians has succumbed to the waters of the sea. Jesus speaks that word. And the man reaches out his hand and it's healed. Since when is it against the law to speak on Sabbath? It's not a work. It's God's work. It's God's word that speaks. It's God's activity. It's God's doing. It's God's work. And what, we can't do that on the Sabbath? Can't do God's work on the Sabbath? We can't allow God to work on the Sabbath? Oh, I pray every day God's working on the Sabbath. 
I pray every Sunday as we come here to hear God's word that God's activity is going to work in you and in me and in this community and the community around us. It's a spoken word that does this. And yet, this is that which comes about in where they want to conspire to kill Jesus, to destroy him. He obviously has been operating under the law. He's operating within the law. I just spoke a word. I didn't break any rules. I just spoke a word. And that's within the law. So the Pharisees conspire with the Herodians. It's obvious they can't do it within the law. They can't get rid of him. They can't destroy him within the law. So eventually they'll just go outside the law. And that's what happens. The law is a gift. The law is good. But it is ineffectual in, in, in transforming one into the realm and into the, the being of and in the righteousness given by God. That is a gift that comes to us as we Sabbath with the Lord, that grace and that love that dwells within us is touched in a manner in which we are confident and assured of God's love and care and grace in our lives. A word from God to trigger, to, to stir, to erupt that spirit within us that we may indeed live lives that is reflective of God's grace and love in this world. The love and grace of God is the only thing that can transform hardened hearts in our world. That's it. A hardened heart will remain hardened under the law, under rules, under regulations, under guilt and shame and fear. No, it's not what Jesus desires for us. And those things cannot transform a heart. Only God's love and grace. And that's who you are and that's who I am. Not only are we witnesses, but bearers of God's grace and love in this world. I pray that this Sabbath, spirit is stirred within each and every one of us to reveal, make known, and experience God's grace and love in our lives. And allow for that love and grace to form us, to shape us. I pray that the faith that has been given you by God is stirred to a point where you wanna share by the way you go about living your life in this world and into the next. By the very grace of God in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whose name we give thanks and praise. Amen. Let us now join together in the prayers of the people. We pray, Lord of the Sabbath, continue to lead us and guide us, especially lead us to green pastures and cool waters, that we may rest with you and in you, refresh our souls and the spirit within each, that we may continue to serve you with energy and clarity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the Sabbath, we thank you for the ministry and your presence during ministry this year. Lives are being transformed and your love has touched so many. We pray that as we enter the summer months, may we find time to just be, and when moments of rest come, may we take advantage of this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the Sabbath, you restored a man on the Sabbath to the fullness of life. There are many in our hearts and minds, including ourselves, who are in need of healing of mind, body, soul, and spirit. Bring wellness and hope to all who call upon your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the Sabbath, 
continue to lead and guide us as we build to issue a call to Pastor Lewis. We thank you for his presence and the presence of Annie, Davy, and Kyrie, faithfully ministering in this congregation. Continue to provide for your ministries and your people here that your kingdom may continue to grow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the Sabbath, we thank you for safe journeys, safe travel, and safe events, for faith, growth, and for family love. We pray your protection continue to prevail in this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these petitions and the petitions on our hearts, we bring to you in confidence, knowing that your love, in your love, you hear from your people and that you do respond with grace and mercy through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. May we now join together in the Lord's Prayer together. We pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you in favor and give you God's peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us go now in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.